Hey, this is Professor Perez again. Now we're going to do part two of our introduction to decimals. Charlie says he's busy doing his homework. Let's see what he's up to. Charlie, what are you doing over there? You're supposed to be doing your homework. I didn't tell you to sleep for your homework. Anyway, let's get started right there. Anyway, in part one, we were reading decimal numbers and converting them to fractions. Now we're going to do the reverse. We're going to start with the fraction and now convert these to decimals. So pay attention, Charlie. Now, let's see if you learned anything. How do you read that fraction? Nine hundredths. Very nice. I guess he did uh, do me? something. Anyway, we have nine hundredths. It's that simple. That's how you see it. So how do we write this? in decimal notation, Charlie. Well, pay attention to this. I'm going to help you out. I'll give you a kung fu move. Notice the denominator is 100. Remember, decimal representations are basically fractions whose denominators are powers of 10. Here we have 10 squared, which is 100, which means we have two zeros. So a lot of people just count the zeros and say, oh, I know I need to have two decimal place values because that will give us a decimal representation that terminates in the hundredths place. Now, how many hundredths do we have, Charlie? Nine. That's right, and we put a zero for our place value, and there it is, nine hundredths. So, nine over a hundred is written as 0 0.09, which is, of course, nine hundredths. Let's do another one. Okay, Charlie, read that fraction for us. 41 hundredths. That's right. Okay, so we have 41 hundredths. Again, we count the zeros there, there's two zeros, which means we have to have two decimal place values, which means, how many do we have, Charlie? 41. 41. Very nice there, Charlie, 41 hundredths. Let's continue on. How about this one right here? Three one thousandths. Don't get scared. Remember, it means three divided by a thousand. And so we have three one thousandths. Now notice, how many zeros do we have, Charlie? Three. That's right. And so we'll put three place values there. Notice our decimal terminates, of course, in the one thousandths, because that's what we have. How many one thousandths do we have, Charlie? Three. Three. We put some zeros for our placeholder, and there is the decimal representation. Again, if you have a calculator and do three divided by one thousand, you will get 0 0.003. Okay, Charlie, let's do another one. How do you say this fraction? One thousand three hundred fourteen. Hundred thousandths. Very nice there, Charlie. That's correct. Okay, how many zeros do we have? Five? That's right. So we have five place values, and notice our decimal will terminate in the hundred thousandths place. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, how many hundred thousandths do we have? 1,314. That's right, and we put that zero for the placeholder, and there is our fraction written as a decimal. Very nice there, Charlie. So. Let's do another one. Ooh, three-fourths. Now notice, this denominator is not a power of 10, which means we have to do what, Charlie? Long division? That's right. Is that going to be on the test? Of course it's going to be on the test. What do you think we're doing this for? Anyway, three-fourths means three divided by four. And so what we have to calculate now is how many times does four go into a three? That's what we got to do. And so what we say here, okay, four won't go into the three, so we need to bring in a decimal number. And so notice we line up our decimals, the zero is a placeholder, and now we bring a zero down and say, okay, four goes into 30 how many times, Charlie? Seven. Seven. That's because seven times four is 28. That's right. And now we subtract, what's 30? Subtract 28. Two. Two. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, does four go into two? No. So we bring another zero and bring it down. Now, how many times does four go into 20? Five. Five, because five times four is 20. You subtract and you get a zero. Now, that we do not have a remainder means that three-fourths is represented by the decimal notation 0 0.75. So let's write that down. Three-fourths equals 0 0.75 which is what, Charlie? 75 hundredths. 75 hundredths, that's right. So three-fourths written as a decimal is 0 0.75, or 75 hundredths, and as a fraction, of course, it's 75 over 100, 
And if you take 75 and divide by 100, you'll get 0 0.75. Or if you reduce 75 over 100 by dividing top and bottom by 25, you do get 3 fourths. All right, Charlie, let's do one more. 3 over 8. That means 3 eighths. Again, we have to find out how many times does 8 go into 3. And we need to bring in our decimals, so we'll put our zero placeholder up on top there. We bring a zero down. Eight goes into 30 how many times, Charlie? Three. Three. Three times eight is 24. We subtract. What's 30 subtract 24? Six. Six. So we got to continue on. We bring down a zero. Eight goes into 60 how many times, Charlie? Seven. Seven. Because eight times seven is 56. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, what's 60 subtract 56? Four. Four. So we got to continue on again. We bring down another zero. And so, how many times does eight go into 40, Charlie? Five times. Five times. Five times eight is 40. We subtract, we get zero. So there you go, Charlie. Three eighths is actually 0 0.375, which is 375 thousandths, right? Again, if you reduce 375 over 1,000, you'll end up at 3 eighths. But the decimal representation is 0 0.375. Now, all fractions can be written in a decimal representation. Some fractions have decimal representations that terminate. Or some fractions have decimal representations that go on forever and ever and never end. But for those that never end, there is always a pattern to it. So you can talk to your teacher, your facilitator, your tutor, your parents about that. Anyway, that completes our presentation on Introduction to Decimals. We'll see you all again soon.